here I am. Uh, this is House Slipping on Tap. Welcome. Um, and this is going to be blog number two. So what we're talking about, what I'm going to talk about today is basically how I went from uh, just kind of wanting to get into real estate to running my business right now, which is called Greg Buys Houses. Um, I know, catchy name, right? So, but before we get started, um, today I'm, uh, I've got a IPA by Lake, pa Lake Placid Brewery. They're out of Lake Placid, New York. In fact, I had a friend over the other day who was uh, from that area. He saw the Adirondack chair on the label and went right for it in the, um, in the fridge. So I'm down to my last one. It's okay. I love to share beer with friends. Uh, and another shout out because this actually came from a, uh, a you know beer per month or you know a, a, a mail order beer per month kind of gift that I got from my brother-in-law so I don't remember the name of it uh, but I will find it and I'll put that down in the comments below and in the blog and hopefully that way anybody who's listening reading watching um, can enjoy uh, some great beer from well out of state I guarantee I never would have found this anywhere else so um, at least not here. So let's go ahead and uh, open it up, see what it's like, and then uh, we'll talk about house flipping. All right, I guess I'll hold that up. I have no idea what this looks like from your side right now. Okay, nice caramel color. Who am I kidding? I don't judge beer, I drink beer. That's good. All right, so. Um, so how did I go from what I was doing to running a business that's just house flipping? And it's a it's not a really short story, but we'll kind of we'll suffice it to say that uh, Danielle and I bought our first house in like 1995. It was in Austin, Texas, and we bought it uh, <clears throat> using the VA um, home loan you know guarantee program, and we paid eight dollars. Well. Okay, we didn't pay $8 for the house. We wrote a check for $8 at closing. Now, obviously we get a loan for the house. I say obviously, but not everybody knows that. But my whole point was it was almost zero money down. And that really excited us. Um, and we bought the house. We actually bought the house for about $60,000. We lived in it for a couple of years, finished off school. Uh, and then after we'd been stationed in Hawaii, um, let me back up, after we left, we rented it. Uh, which is my first foray into being a landlord and we rented it primarily because it seemed like a pretty good idea the mortgage payments were uh, low enough uh, and rents were high enough uh, that even after we paid for the um, management company we were making not a ton of money but it was positive right so and then we learned about all the tax advantages and blah 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 right there's a whole bunch of stuff that that's not what i'm talking about here today but anyway after we uh, a couple of years, we sold it and made a pretty big profit. I thought, hey, that's really cool. And then when I moved to Pensacola to be a, become a flight instructor, um, I kind of got into it because we moved here right after Ivan. And there was a weird uh, time in history when the um, availability of housing was just cut at the knees here in Pensacola. And that was post Ivan. And you could find a lot of stuff on the MLS. And that's what I did. I found a, a property on the MLS. It was right around the corner. Uh, I got a loan for it because that was the other thing was money was almost free. Um, it's kind of almost free now, but for different reasons and in different ways. Um, but money was almost free at the time. You could just fog a mirror and you could get a loan. So that's what I did. Get a loan, paid a couple guys to do the renovations. It was mostly a carpet and paint job. And boom, made a little bit of money in the back half. And I thought, this is going to be easy. And then the deals in the MLS dried up. And... So then I got into like yellow letters. Well, I didn't know what a yellow letter was. We literally got into just printing letters, trying to figure out, you know, who to send the letters to, to find motivated sellers. And that was a real chore. Uh, I got my real estate license. And that was not worth it for me anyway. I know lots of folks who, um, who did that. And actually, uh, there's a great interview on my Greg Buys Houses uh, YouTube site between me and Kathy Batterton. Uh, and Kathy got her real estate license the same time I did, and she took off with it as a realtor, uh, which was, and she's done amazing things. And I'm really proud to have been associated with her for this long. Uh, but my line is I got my real estate license thinking it would help me in the real estate investing world, and it didn't really. And then I got assigned to uh, North Carolina, and I said, I don't want to do that anymore. 
Um, but that was in 2008. What happened in 2008? The bottom dropped out, right? So all of that free money that we were getting when I first you know, moved into Pensacola around 2004, 2005, all that free money, those chickens came home to roost, so to speak, right? And the whole economy, you know, flatlined, just poof, out of, you know, evaporated, right? And so the value of the houses that I did own, luckily I got out of a lot of the ones that were kind of in the creative finance strategy that I learned, you know, from my local um, REA, uh, which is real estate, REA up, right? So real estate investment um, association, REIA, there we go. Anyway, uh, a lot of the techniques I learned from those folks, um, including Matt Robinson, who now runs the Professional Investors Guild here in Pensacola, it used to be called Real Estate Navigators, no big deal. But when I learned the, the, the tips and tricks I learned from that organization um, led me to acquire a handful of properties and flip a handful more properties uh, while I was here as a flight instructor. And luckily I got rid of everything because they were under some creative financing strategies that probably would not have worked once the uh, availability of funding from uh, traditional institutional sources dried up. So I got out of that. So I said, I don't want to be a landlord anymore, but uh, too late because two of the properties that I've lived in here in Pensacola, I couldn't sell because they were underwater immediately because the values just tanked because of what happened in 2008. So left here, moved to North Carolina, said, ah, you know what? I know how to be a landlord. I'll do that. So we struggled through landlording on properties that were under uh, underwater um, for a few um, And that's a financially underwater, meaning they were they were worth not less than what I owed, but really, really, really close to what I owed. Um, and that's called being over leveraged. So I learned some things there. Thankfully, I didn't have to learn it the really, really hard way. Um, anyway, so we, uh, we left to North Carolina. Um, we ended up buying another property in North Carolina because um, I can't learn lessons the easy way. And anyway, we bought one there uh, and almost immediately, we thought that the market was turning around kind of thing and, and what it was. And so we moved in. We lived there for three years and we moved back to Pensacola, became an unintentional landlord there because I thought for sure we'd be able to sell that house and I was wrong because then Jacksonville, North Carolina had its own unique uh, economic downturn. Um, and so that property still isn't worth what I paid for. Um, but anyway, we sold. The, all that to say that I've made a lot of mistakes because I went sort of unguided, if you will, uh, in the real estate uh, investing, you know, avenue. Um, I have since acquired guidance. Uh, and you have to pay for a lot of that guidance, as you should, because, you know, if you go to a um, a financial advisor, you're paying for that guy. You should pay for that guy because you want that guy to give you financial advice based upon uh, your relationship, and you want that guy to get paid for his financial advice or her financial advice. Very specifically, because you're paying for a skill, just like you're paying for a skill if you're, if you're not a carpenter and you need carpentry work done, or if you're not a mechanic and you need mechanical work done, um, you you need to pay for that skill so that those people can they, they deserve to get paid for their skills. So I'm paying for guidance in house flipping. Brings me to what happened with Greg Buys Houses. When did that start? How did that become a business? I'll tell you, it basically became a business full on in uh, the beginning of 2020. Um, I started it as uh, a marketing channel in about April of 2019 because I discovered after trying a, a number of different other marketing techniques to, to attract motivated sellers and therefore acquire uh, off-market properties at deep discounts that I could use to turn around and flip, um, I used other techniques like I used the letter thing again that didn't work direct mail was expensive I tried cold calling which is abysmal um, I, I, I absolutely hate it for a number of reasons um, not the least of which is it's invasive I don't like being cold called um, anyway and so I didn't feel right about even hiring somebody else to do what I didn't I wasn't willing to do uh, Fast forward to the first part of 2019 and I found um, Facebook ads and I learned from a guy um, who uh, taught me how to run Facebook ads, and I did that. And so the entire uh, last half of 2019, actually the entire remainder of 2019, I ran Facebook ads, um, acquired a bunch of properties, and then sold the contracts. And then all of 2020, I basically did the same thing. Continued running Facebook ads, 
I ran more Facebook ads because I was actually doing very well and just selling the contracts. Never even had a touching, uh, never even, never even having, blah, never even having to touch the uh, the properties themselves. Um, I didn't have to hire any, uh, uh, you know, carpenters or handymen or GCs or anything like that because I wasn't going to be one, the one doing the flip. What what I found out was there's actually a subcategory of people who don't want to market for their own properties and they're happy to pay a premium if I find them. So that's what I fell into was a niche or a, um, a segment they call wholesaling, which I think is the wrong word, but it doesn't really matter. Um, bottom line is I did that all of 2020 and that's what Greg, By House, Greg Buys Houses grew into. And so what you see now online, uh, my website, sellyourhousetogreg.com and my YouTube channel, which doesn't have a name yet because I, I need more followers to get a real name. Um, but it's also called Greg Buys Houses. Um, the, uh, I'm on Instagram as Greg Buys Houses. I'm on Twitter as Greg Buys Houses too because the other guy just won't <laughs> delete his Twitter feed that he hasn't used since 2013 or whatever. Um, and then of course, uh, Facebook as Greg Buys Houses. Uh, I changed it to Greg Buys Houses USA a few months back and um, Anyway, I just left it that way, whatever. It's just a page, uh, but it's a way to kind of communicate with uh, a lot of different audiences, including you. So um, there we are. Um, that's how kind of I got started. That's where I'm at right now. And um, what does any of that have to do with the actual house flipping? Well, that's the next block. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on. But suffice it to say that through a, you know, a learning experience of you know, having some flips, go well and then having some economic downturns, you know, get into the way and learning what I could have done better to be better prepared and better positioned to survive those um, or really to thrive through those. Uh, I've since learned that uh, you need guidance, you need coaching, um, you need, you know, help from people who've been there, done that. And there's plenty of those folks. Um, and you need to use a little bit of judgment on your own to figure out who to trust to help you because there's a lot of scammers in that world as well, as there are within almost any other world. Um, so that's my story so far, um, and I will take you through a few flips as we uh, go on more blog post adventures. So but in the meantime, uh, I feel like I need to finish this, not in a big gulp, but um, I'm not gonna sit here and drink in front of you guys. You know, maybe a sip at a time. So that's it for now. You guys stay safe and uh, check me out on sellyourhousetogreg.com. Follow me on Greg Buys Houses at Instagram, uh, at me, at me, uh, at Twitter, on Twitter, at Greg Buys Houses too. And uh, of course, Facebook, Greg Buys Houses USA. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can connect. It'd be awesome. And uh, thinking about a TikTok. Maybe, I don't know. Thanks. Um, take care.